My family just went on a 2600 mile road trip going up to DC, over to Ohio, and then back down to Florida, and we spent a lot of time in the car. So I want to share with you some of my favorite tech to keep all the devices charged in the car, how Apple Maps did versus Google Maps, and a huge frustration is even though I downloaded a ton of movies, I could not play them off my iPad to an external display, and I'm going to tell you why. First, let's talk about charging. We had multiple iPhones in the car, and for me and my wife who were in the front seat, we used Belkin's MagSafe car adapter. It is pretty expensive when it comes to car adapters, but this is legitimate MagSafe. It's gonna charge at that higher wattage, and we just had one for each of us. I did get one of the Anchor car adapters, which had two USB-C ports. This way we could have both of those chargers plugged into a single adapter, and we were good to go. Now for the kids in the back seat, and even farther back, we did have some outlets in the second row. And for that, I actually used this Anchor double USB-C power adapter. I'm gonna mention Anchor a lot in this video. No, they have never sponsored my videos nor sent me any products. These are all things that I have bought on my own. But I love this little Anchor double USB-C port device. The little prongs actually fold in, which is super nice. And this was able to charge two iPads or an iPad and an iPhone, and all the kids' devices were able to stay charged. I'll put links to this and everything I talk about in the video description. And when it came to needing more charging options, I had two of these Anchor car adapters. This one has one USB-C and one USB-A, which I did need one of those older USB-A because that's just the cord we had in the car. But you can also get these with double USB-C ports, which is great. Now, when it came to charging my devices in the hotel rooms as we traveled, I wanted something compact, but that would charge all three of my devices, iPhone, Apple Watch, and AirPods at once. And fast charging for Apple Watch was important to me. So that's why I went with the Anchor 3-in-1 Cube. Now, this thing is not exactly compact, especially when you compare it to Apple's MagSafe Duo, but I just didn't want to carry more lightning cables around, and this does not charge the Apple Watch fast. Also can't do three devices. So the Anchor 3-in-1 Cube, it's USB-C right here on the back. You actually lift the top, and so you can charge your iPhone here with MagSafe. Your AirPods charge right here on this little back platform, and then you just push in, and the Apple Watch charger pops out, this actually fits my Apple Watch Ultra, and this is Apple Watch fast charging for Series 7 and newer. Love this thing, it was worth a little chunkiness to bring it around, and this is what I used in every hotel room. All right, so number two, what about navigation? Now, I did a review of the Carper Ride screen, I'll put a link to that above and in the video description, but I honestly love this thing. None of my cars are new enough to have CarPlay built in, but this guy can connect to multiple iPhones, you can switch which one you want active on screen, and we used this Carper Ride screen throughout all 2,600 miles, and it worked great. While my wife was driving, I actually connected my iPhone to the screen. This way I can add stops and manage directions and all she had to do was follow it. That was a little imperfect because then I was getting all the Apple Watch taps and sometimes she was missing those. But of course you can always switch which iPhone is active in just a couple taps. I'm actually going to be reviewing a newer model of the CarPride screen, one that has dual Bluetooth transmission, which is pretty cool. So subscribe to the channel, that's coming up soon. Now, early on, I really wanted to try Apple Maps versus Google Maps, and so we were kind of doing dual directions, but having directions running in both Apple Maps and Google Maps on a CarPlay screen gets pretty cumbersome. Notifications come up on the bottom, and they cover things that are on screen. So we decided to just go with Apple Maps, and honestly, it was very accurate, both in traffic and routing. I loved Apple Maps all over from Florida to DC, over to Ohio, and back. It served us extremely well. All of the ETA times were very accurate, traffic was good, and any alternate routes that suggested, we usually took, especially if there was traffic, and it never led us astray. I will say, when we were first leaving on the trip trying to get out of Florida, I-95 was completely backed up. There was actually an accident with a large UPS truck. Not a good situation, but we actually had to avoid 95 for a good two or three hours taking the back roads. And I will say, Apple Maps kept trying to have us take 95. Maybe it would have been a couple minutes quicker, but I could not get it to give us an alternate route. That was one instance where we did follow Google Maps for that alternate route, it gave us the back roads, and we were able to miss most of the traffic. So in that one situation, Google Maps had an edge, but honestly, for the rest of the trip, and we drove a lot, we used Apple Maps the entire time, and we're really happy with it. And if you didn't catch it, me and my son actually did an Apple Maps versus Google Maps head-to-head -head video. You can check it out above or in the description. All right, and finally, let's talk about entertainment in the car. Now, the kids did have iPads. They could watch things or play games with Nintendo Switch, which is great to have those USB-C car chargers, because then you can charge the Switch but I had downloaded a bunch of movies to my iPad mini so we could play in the car. Now, it's an older Infinity, like 2011, and so it didn't have any kind of HDMI hookup, but it did have an RCA jack, those old red, white, and yellow jacks, if you remember. So I thought I was being slick. I got the RCA adapter to HDMI, HDMI adapter to USB-C, and this adapter that I got for the iPad mini has an HDMI and also a USB-C, so I could keep the iPad charged while it was playing movies. But now here's where the story takes a dark turn. Here I have my iPad mini, see all these movies I have downloaded. This iPad is in airplane mode, so no internet connection. If I wanted to play one of these movies, I could just tap it, starts playing. But of course, I wanted to play them on the screens that are in the back of the seats in the second row. 
So let me show you the process. Also, as you can see, these are the movies I chose to download so we could watch in the car. Would love to hear you in the comments if I chose well. But I'm gonna take my USB-C to HDMI adapter and have the other end of the HDMI cable plugged into my A10 Mini Pro like it would in the car. And this is exactly what happened when we tried to play a movie in the car. When I press on a specific movie, let's say The Greatest Showman, which I had downloaded, this is the pop-up I see. Whatever HDMI security, HDCP, that is on this movie that I've downloaded to my own iPad, and these are movies I've purchased in Apple TV. These are not movies I've ripped, although that would have actually played, nor are these in a streaming service, although Disney Plus gives me the same error. Now, if I turn on internet or turn on my hotspot, I could stream the movie, no problem, but you'll see there's another option to download compatible video. If I tap that, of course, I have to connect to Wi-Fi to download it, which defeats the whole purpose of downloading all these movies, so I didn't have to hotspot and use gigabytes of data while I was in my car. But apparently you can download possibly a lower quality version, maybe the 480p version, and it would play over the HDMI connector. But as it stands, just downloading a bunch of movies ahead of time, which I thought I was planning well, I can't play any of these over an HDMI adapter. Same thing happened with Disney+. Plus. I had movies downloaded in the app, ready to play, and if I try to play one, I get the same kind of error, unable to play because it's on an external display. Now, I don't want to get on a whole thing here, but I will say most of the movies that I have here in the Apple TV app, especially the ones I downloaded to play on my iPad mini, are all movies that I had bought. I spent $20, maybe even $30 to buy some of these movies when they first came out, and I couldn't play any of them over an HDMI adapter. Now, the car we were riding in, it does play DVDs, so I could put a DVD in the player and we could have played that, but of course, we didn't bring many. And I assume this would work because it worked when I was at home connected to Wi-Fi and I went to play these movies. But if you don't have internet, none of these movies play even though they're downloaded. So a little suggestion, if you have maybe a slightly older car like I do and it has those screens in the seats and you wanna play entertainment on a road trip, maybe get DVDs. But I think an even better option might be when you wanna buy a movie, get the Blu-ray slash DVD version and rip the Blu-ray and put it on Plex. Then you can download them in the Plex app and it'll probably play just fine. Now, I stopped collecting DVDs a long time ago and I like buying it on digital because then I know it's just available on all my devices at any time. But for this particular situation and playing on an external monitor, I was a little stumped. So if you have any ideas on how to get this to play, or maybe if you know of an adapter that actually supports HDCP security over HDMI, so I could have played these movies in the car, I would love to hear about it. Drop a comment below. And if you have any questions about road trip or other travel tech, drop a comment below. I also had a whole video talking about tech for traveling around the world. Did a recent international trip and I had a bunch of different tech that I put in my Waterfield backpack. You can check that out above or the links in the description. As always, do all the things, like, subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.